Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be talking about how to solve a special type of equation, an equation that has variables on both sides of the equal sign. So that's the goal here. And um, I thought that I would see, see what I could do with a, a British accent for at least the introduction to this lesson. So uh, forgive me if this is not uh, perfectly accurate. Um, <clears throat> so, before we get to these equations, the first thing we need to do is we need to look at a pair of puzzles here. Now, if you look, we have a mobile right here, and there's four circles and uh, on the left side, and then we have a circle and two triangles on the right side. And we know that the weight of this circle is four pounds. You can see that right here. Um, and the goal is to identify the weight of the triangle. And so the way that we can do this, well, there's, there's two strategies, frankly. Um, the first strategy is to remove shapes that have an equal weight. So uh, for example, um, we know that these two circles here would weigh the same amount. And so therefore they're not going to have any impact on the weight of the triangles. These equal each other and therefore we can ignore them in this problem. Now, what do we have remaining? Well, we have three circles here. They each have a weight of four for a total weight of 12, which must balance with the weight of the two triangles. These must have a weight of 12, which means each triangle must have a weight of six. And of course, we can look at a similar problem over here with the hearts and crescent moons. Now, something's very interesting here. We know that the weight of the hearts are 12 but we don't know the weight of the crescent moons. And yet we should be able to figure out how to make this balance. So we're going to use the same exact strategy. We're going to remove shapes that have an equal weight. So if I remove this pair of hearts, well, I've removed 12 pounds from one side and 12 pounds from the other, it should be fine to remain a balanced mobile, right? I'm not tipping it over to one side or the other. Well. What about these crescent moons? I don't know how many pounds they weigh. They could weigh 12 pounds, they could weigh 20, they could weigh two. Can I still remove a crescent moon from each side? Is that permissible to remove this pair of crescent moons here? And the answer must be yes, because regardless of what that weight is, if we remove the same weight from the left side and the right side, the mobile will, will remain balanced. And we can do it again here. We can remove this pair of crescent moons, leaving us with two crescent moons and a heart, which has a weight of 12. And so if we look here at the remaining uh, problem here, we see two crescent moons. They must have a combined weight of 12. And well, turns out that the crescent moons also have a weight of six. All right, that's about the best I can do. So that's one other way that we can do this, right? It's just removing things that have an equal weight and then we get what's left over. Another way that we could do this is, our other option is to write an equation and solve this problem. So for example, um, the equation for the left-hand mobile, um, well, there's you know four circles that each have a weight of four pounds. Well, that's 16 pounds. And over here we have a four pound circle plus two triangles. And um, I know I have a kind of an odd looking T there. It has a foot. There we go. Um, 16 equals uh, four plus two T. And then we can solve it the exact same way we always do. You know, subtract four, we get 12 equals two T. And then we divide by two, divide by two, and we get that the weight of the triangle is six, which is of course what we already got. Um, that's how we would write the equation for the first one. Well, what about the second one? Well, let's take a look at it. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got two hearts that weigh 12. So that's gonna be 24 plus two moons. And on the right-hand side, we have one heart that weighs 12 pounds plus four moons. And let's think about what we did here. Well, one of the things we did was we removed the moons that balanced with each other. And so what that would look like here is I would remove two moons from each side, and then I would rewrite my expressions. 
on the left hand side, 24 plus two moons minus two moons. Well, the moons are gone, so it's just the 24 pounds. And then on the other side, 12 plus four moons minus two moons. Well, that's going to be 12 plus two moons. And hopefully you can see we're going to end up getting the exact same answer that we got um, on the other side. 24 minus 12 is 12. That equals, well, that should be minus 12, uh, 2m. So if we divide both sides by two, we get m is equal to six. So we know the moon has a weight of six. And here's where we get to the big idea is that we're allowed to add numbers to both sides and subtract numbers from both sides, but we're also allowed to add variables or subtract variables from both sides, as long as we do the same thing to both sides. As I can't remove two moons and one moon, that's not balanced, but I can remove two moons from both sides, or I could even add another moon to each side, right? I could add another moon, that would still remain balanced, adding moons to each side, just depending on the situation. Um, so again, just to have that written out, what I already said, we can add or subtract variables on both sides of an equation as long as we do the exact same thing to both sides of the equation. So I have a few examples. Um, this may be a little longer than normal and I apologize for that, but it's um, a really foundational idea. So, um, Let's take a look at the first two examples. All right, um, <clears throat> on the left-hand side, we have 6x plus 12 equals 8x plus four. So you can imagine that's six x's on the left-hand side and eight x's on the right-hand side. So we have a bunch of extra x's. And before we start solving this equation, we need to get the extra x's out of there. So I would remove six x's from each side of the equation. This is very important you must have done it on the left side and the right side of the equation, right? Um, so this would be 6x minus 6x is 0x, right? There are no more x's on that side, so it's just the 12. And then 8x minus 6x is 2x plus 4. And now we're back in our comfort zone, right? We know how to do this. x is being multiplied by 2, added by 4. So I subtract 4, and I get 8 equals 2x. Then I divide by two and I get X equals four. That part we know. The real challenge here is that first step that I'm doing in red. Um, let's look at the other example here. This one's kind of odd. It's one of those where we have that subtraction going on, right? Where it's not plus four A, it's minus four A. And anytime you see a subtraction in this type of problem, um, I would recommend adding that variable to both sides, because what it's going to do is it's going to balance out the negativity of those minus 4a's with a plus 4a. And so if I add 4a to both sides of my equation, well, on this side, I get 28, and then minus 4a plus 4a, those add to zero, so they cancel out. Um, and then we get 28. Over here, we get 7a plus 14. And then we're back to our normal, right? We subtract 14 and we get 14 equals 7a. We divide by seven and we get a is equal to two. And there we have it. So the last example I wanna do two times and there's a reason for that. Um, you'll notice here we have this negative y over here and then 12 plus 3y on the other side. And we need to keep this balanced. Um, and I just told you, if we have those negative variables, we probably want to add to, um, to get rid of them. So I'm going to do this problem two different ways. And you'll see that either way works. And it's just a matter of your preference. OK, so I'm doing this two different ways. They both get the correct answer. So to get rid of negative y, I might add 1y to both sides of my equation. And now this is really important. What's negative y plus y? Well, it's zero, right? If you have a negative y, you add a positive y, you get zero. So a lot of people get stuck here and they say, what do I put over there? There's nothing there. Well, yes, what's the mathematical symbol for nothing, right? It's zero, right? So there should be still a zero there. And we have 12 plus four y as our answer on this side, right? Um, Cause three y plus y is four y. And then we just approach this like any other problem, right? Y is being multiplied and added. So I undo the last step. I subtract zero minus 12 is negative 12. And 12 minus 12 is zero plus four Y. 
So I bring down the 4y and then I divide both sides by 4 and I get y is equal to negative 3. So this is the answer that makes this equation true. But let's say I felt uncomfortable with that for whatever reason. I just, I don't like that plus y leading to a zero. And instead I've decided I wanna get rid of the three y. So what if I subtract three y from both sides? Um, well, let's see what happens. Well, on the left-hand side, negative y, we're already down one y, minus three y, we're down four y total there. And then here 12 and plus three y minus three y that adds to zero. So we just have 12. And then we divide both sides by four y or by four, negative four, gosh. And I get negative four y divided by negative four is just y. 12 divided by negative four is negative three. And so again, I get the correct answer that y is the value negative three. So what I want you to notice here is that both methods worked but one method or the other might be easier just because you know it helps get rid of the negatives. So for example, um, going back up to um, the previous problem right here, we could technically um, subtract 3a from both sides and we could get 28 minus 7a equals 14 but that's just a lot harder of an equation to solve, honestly. So that's why I don't like doing it that way. I like doing the plus four A that I showed you already, but could you technically do it both ways? Absolutely, you could. All right, well, cheerio. Hope you enjoyed my accent. And in the next video, I will instead share with you a trivia question, which you can potentially answer correctly for prizes. Thank you very much.